First of all, really thankful. We, our guys, no reason to hang our heads, but uh, tonight we ran into a better team. They were a better team tonight. They've been playing great. Uh, I think whether they won 11 out of 12 or something like that. And uh, we, it was difficult for us to simulate with it. We haven't really played anyone like them this year, but uh, it was good. Um, good for us moving forward. Sorry to for our seniors that you know the run ended. Not many teams get to end on a win. I was fortunate enough to have done it once. That's great, but uh, those emotions and stuff. But um, they Texas and I'm just got to give a hat tip. Sometimes they force us into some bad situations. They capitalized and they were just quicker to the ball, uh, loose balls, um, and a lot of the areas that we pride ourselves on. Uh, they were the better team tonight. Uh, Coach and Ty, I've gotten the pleasure to watch you guys all season. Um, this has been one of the most incredible programs I've watched. I'm out of Washington State since I've, I can remember watching basketball. I want to ask you guys both about Mike Flowers. Uh, one season in, one season out, but he left such an impact on this program. I want you guys to talk about him a little bit, just to talk about what he's I mean, done meant yeah. to you guys. Mike's a competitor uh, since day one when we both uh, got on campus. We was working out together. I just knew he was like that. Like he was, We were working out, competing, playing ones all the time. Um, and I could just tell he's one of those one of those special players. Yeah, I think it's it's even more than that. Um, his journey to getting here, and his uh, who he is as a person, his character. Uh, it's really hard to do when you come into a program with one year guy and have that kind of impact with people. Where you know you can't even see as a coach, but in in the locker room and on the court, his work ethic and his desire to be good and his desire to win are great and uh, really wish I had him another year there's a lot of things that I think we could because he's really uh, a learner he's a he's he's a sponge who wants to get better and there's so many things it's hard to get all done in a year but he uh, had a big hand and uh, having this great run in the postseason and, and getting there we had a lot of bumps with COVID and other injuries and stuff like that but he him and Ty Especially him, those guys were they're they're out there because they're reliable. They come out they come to work every day and really special person will do really good things in life. Questions for the player first, okay? Yep. Coach. Yeah, that that surge that they had in the uh, kind of five minutes or so into the second half. What what could you sense kind of uh, triggered that? I I guess or, or you know could you just speak on what what started that? Yeah, it seemed I mean, like for them they didn't miss. Like, <laughs> They were getting to the rack, which is what they do. Um, they were making contested and one tough twos. Um, I fouled, I fouled uh, Diara on the four point play, converted that. I mean, they just went on a run and we weren't taking care of the ball and it, we suffered for it, so. Hey Ty, Colby and Brad with KUGR Student Radio and the Murrow College. Um, I just wanted to ask, what uh, what has this season meant to you? Obviously, you had the incredible experience of playing at MSG, and how are you going to use that experience going forward and in the future, and maybe even make it to the big dance next year? Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, uh, just not playing for a while, coming from D2, it's playing 30 minutes a game, and you know, a Power Five conference, and having the season that we did um, it was just an incredible experience. I tried to stay locked into the moment, but at the same time. I remember to enjoy it at the places I was going and, and just know I'm supposed to be here and we're supposed to be here. So I think it's, it's good for us going forward. Anything else, Mr. Brown? You good? Okay. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Enough time. Hey coach, did you? I know they like to get to the to the rack and and like and uh, get those those layups and whatnot. Did you expect them to be able to get that downhill like they did through that that stretch? No, I really thought uh, we're a pretty good defensive team. We're not great at keeping people in front, but we have great rim protection, and uh, they they just were able to live in there um, and against zone too. We thought we had a little success at the end of the first half, and uh, we knew we were kind of fortunate to be down six. <laughs> and I told them they're probably mad at themselves for not being up 20. So we thought we had a little something, but they uh, they got penetrated our zone too. and got some downhill runs at the rim and drop off dunks and just couldn't really, we haven't, no one's done that to us and credit to them. I mean, they had 32 point field goals. That's hard to do. Anything else, Mr. Brown? 
approach? Kind of on that. Uh, what is it that kind of sets them apart on those penetration plays? Well, why are they so tough to kind of stop on those well, triple drives? Well, they play like they're just their personnel. It's kind of set up almost like four guard like guys, and they they'll attack you from the middle, elbows. And Jackson's a really good player, and I know Buzz, a big analytics guy, and believes in the paint touch. And we knew that. And sometimes you know it, and you still can't can't defend it. Um, and some it's a they they're just it's more their will. You know, like they're just like willful team, and they got us. We're still in that game down 11. Like Ty said, he fouled him. He takes a 14. And they didn't let up the gas at all. They didn't. They just they step on your neck. They just go for it, and uh, they keep doing what they do. Um, and it's a good lesson for us because uh, you know we got some young guys in there, and we got some older guys, but uh, we not no one's really. I can't really think this year even. I mean, Arizona was really good. And they kind of separated at our place when we played them. Um, you say a little, you say a little bit. Both times they've kind of did this, but these guys were even more physical. Not maybe not as quite as talented, but more physical. Um, just willful. I know Buzz opened up his comments talking about y'all's relationship. How it goes back to him being a, a, a kid at an SMU basketball camp. What uh, can you remember about that that first meeting and how you've seen grow, uh, Buzz grow in his career? You know what? He I was I think a sophomore, junior in college. It was at SMU, and he was maybe a freshman. I think he was a manager at a JUCO at Nav Navarro, I believe. And uh, he, he just like, he had, he had this quality about him where everyone liked him, knew him. And yet he's a pretty understated guy. And he's, like I said, he's one guy I can text. I'll probably text him in two years. He'll get back to me like that. He's just very available. That's probably he's a good recruiter. He's, he's really thoughtful. Um, it's just, we both kind of follow each other's careers. Obviously he's had the tremendous amount of success. And, uh, really hard worker and, and doesn't surprise me how hard they play. And uh, he's a really good fit for a college station. Now, I grew up in Houston. Um, so uh, I know that it, <laughs> it wasn't fair. When I talked to our radio people, they had the fight song blaring. <laughs> it's like I, I know it well. Um, but, uh, you know, nothing but praise for how well. And he's a pretty loyal guy. He's got guys like Dale Lair and Steve Rockford that, that, uh, kind of guys I knew through going through the business and learned a lot from them and he, he kind of carries that whole whole group around with them and they're they're a pretty neat group. All right, last question. Uh, Coach, you kind of discussed this a little bit earlier about how the guys have nothing to, to hang their heads about, but you know, going from three, four years ago to where this program was and now you're at Madison Square Garden on the national stage, is this something that you just keep telling them like look at where you guys are to where we where we've been absolutely uh you uh you got to dream it right you got to have a vision you got to put it out there and even we've gotten this we're just excited to get in the tournament because i've been jilted on those before i didn't assume nothing and you know we talked about you know new york and it was a great homecoming for a lot of our guys myself coaching here for six years um and uh, just knowing that getting it our deal is like we got to get postseason then to win one and know that we'll have some expectations next year and uh, managing those and, and working hard in the off season because uh, you, hopefully you got to, they exposed us a little bit. So we got to, to, they didn't make the tournament. That's really shocking, <laughs> but uh, we're proud of what we've done. Um, but we got a lot more work to do. And, but uh, the, the root, the, the foundation's there for this group. And like, I think our program's finally matured. I've been talking about that going this year, like, we aren't because of COVID and usually like that year three, you kind of go in knowing what to expect. We had a lot of new guys. 